Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. And this week we have a backwards compatible PS3. Now, I know some of you might not think that the PS3 is retro, <laughs> but if you think about it, you know, this system was released all the way back in 2006, so that's quite a while ago. Um, this particular unit is a launch version of the PS3, also known as a backwards compatible. You can tell those apart from others because it has a, a, a lid here that flips up and it has four USB ports in the front. So these are probably the most desired version of the PS3 and the reason why is that it is fully compatible with PS1, PS2, and PS3 discs. So it basically gives you a very large chunk of that Sony library all in one system and output via HDMI. So it's hard to find these uh, in a working state. They, they have all sorts of problems. Uh, a lot of times they have a blinking red light of death or yellow light of death. Um, thankfully, this one is operational, but it does have a bad Blu-ray drive. So if I hit the eject button, you'll hear it makes all sorts of weird noises and it's definitely not functioning. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take this thing apart, we're gonna look at this Blu-ray drive, and I have some spare parts, so we're gonna see if we can cobble together a working drive with those spare parts. All right, let's get to it. All right, so the disassembly of a PS3 is actually pretty simple. Um, there's one security screw here on the side, and normally there's like a warranty sticker here and a rubber little stopper as well. With this particular unit, those parts are gone, but um, you know, it's not a big deal. So what you gotta do is kind of come in, and uh, I'm using a, uh, a flathead screwdriver because um, there's like a weird security bit in here for this. And uh, if you don't have that, a flat, head screwdriver will, will do the job and you just kind of have to get in here and get it lined up and eventually you'll manage to get it out and so someone has already very clearly been in here so it's already pretty loose there we go all right now once that's out you kind of take the lid you push it this way and then lift it up and now we've got the first layer of screws to remove. And thankfully, everything else in this system just uses standard Phillips, so it's not a big deal. So just to show you guys really quick, um, the screw over here in the upper right corner is actually short compared to the others. And there's actually an S here on the lid to remind you that to, you need to use a short lid, a short screw over here. Um, you also want to be mindful when you pull this up because there's a little metal piece here and that can go flying or get lost, so be, be aware of that. Okay, so then it just kind of lifts up like this, just pull it towards the front. And there we go, so this is the, um, this is the, the main board here, and I'm just gonna pull that out. And so what you have are basically like a bunch of modules. You have the power supply module here, you've got wireless and Bluetooth here, you've got your Blu-ray drive, and then your power and eject switch. So this design is actually very nice because if any one of these components go bad, you don't really have to dig very deep. You can pop this module out and then you can replace it with another one. All right, so I'm gonna just uh, clean this up. It's got a little bit of dust on it, and then we'll come back and pull out the Blu-ray drive. Okay, so removal of the Blu-ray drive is actually pretty easy because it's not locked into place with screws or anything like that. It's just uh, held in place by its size. So you'll see here there's a little ribbon cable here. This is just, I think, the power supply for the, for the drive. So you just pull this up, and that's it. And then you lift the drive and you rotate it outward like this. And then this ribbon cable is what connects it over to the main board. And so there's like a little retaining clip that holds it in place. And with your fingernail, you can just gently lift it up. Uh, be gentle because if you push on this too hard, you'll remove the clip. And then getting it back in is really not fun at all. <laughs> so this is probably the only difficult step in this repair. So yeah, just pull that up, pull out the ribbon cable, and that's it. So now this drive is loose, and uh, we're gonna take it apart and see what we can do to get it working. Okay, so I have um, now got two Blu-ray drives here. 
This is the original one that was in the system, and this is one that I pulled from another backwards compatible PS3. This is one that had a blinking red light of death and is probably not going to be easy at all to save. Uh, so what I'm hoping is that this one has a good working drive and laser, and maybe I can just switch these guys around and see how things go. So now, in older consoles, um, drives were easier to switch because the main board had no connection to the drive, so I could literally just pull one out and pop one in. That's not the case with the PS3. So when you flip these guys over, they have a controller board here. Now, these controller boards are actually married to the motherboard. So, so this, this is the one that came out of the unit. So I have to actually take this board and swap it with this one in order to make everything work out. So um, thankfully, that's not very complicated. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is, is show you how to disconnect one of these and then do the swap. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm hoping that the laser inside of this unit is good. And then um, we can just go ahead and uh, just swap out these controller boards and, and see how things go. All right, so first thing you gotta do is remove these ribbon cables. Um, so there's three of them here, and you just lift up these, these little retaining clips and pull these guys out, not, not complicated. And then there's one here on the side. And there is a little power uh, plug over here too, but I usually save that for the end because it's very fragile and easy to break. So what you do is just go around, remove the screws, okay, and that's about it. So now you just lift up like this, pull it out, and bear in mind you're still attached, so you gotta <clears throat> just hold on to the, to the wire here and then just pull, and now that guy's free completely. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this to the other, um, the original drive, and then I'm gonna switch boards, and uh, let's see how things go from there. All right, so I'm back here with the bad Blu-ray drive, and what I wanna do with this, uh, I don't actually need to do this for the repair, but this is more just for instructional purposes, is I wanna just kinda show you how to open this drive and replace the Blu-ray laser because sometimes, you know, you can... I think you might be able to purchase the laser itself. I haven't tried that yet, but I'll bet you that it's still commercially available because this console isn't that old. And so, if that's the case, then, and you don't have access to a donor like I did, you could potentially still get this thing working by buying a new laser. So, you see, that's how the, um, the top of the, the lid comes off. And, uh, and then this is also free now. So you just have to kind of lift it like this and remove the tape that's attaching these ribbons to it. So now you can see the laser over here. Um, so now in order to gain access to it, what you gotta do is remove five screws on the top. And then this is the magnet. You can just set this off to the side. just rotate it like I did off to the left. And so now you can see this is where the Blu-ray laser is. And um, it's kind of held in place in a similar manner to how it is on a PS2 Slim. So there's actually these two little, two little uh, screws over here. Just gotta remove that guy. And then this retaining clip pops off. And then there's a similar one on this side. There we go. And now this rail is open. So now you can just pull it out and this is just attached by some tape. But there we go. So now this laser is free. And so if you're able to purchase a replacement, all you have to do is now pop it in and uh, you might need to reattach this retaining clip and this retaining clip and then just reverse all the steps to get the um, you know, drive reassembled. So I'm gonna set this aside because this might still be a working laser. I'm not sure if this drive has a problem. I think this drive has a problem with the mechanisms. I'm not really sure if the laser itself is bad. So I'll try to test this separately. 
All right, so let's get back to the reinstallation and testing of this PS3. All right, so I have reassembled the uh, PS3. And uh, so now I'm ready to start testing things. And uh, so yeah, with a backwards compatible PS3, you've got to test four separate discs. You've got the PS1 discs, the PS2 DVDs, and the, the, the PS2 CDs, which are blue. And then you've got, of course, PS3 discs. So now I'm going to go ahead and just test each one of these one by one and see if it loads up. Okay, so I've tested all four discs and they all seem to be working, so this backwards compatible PS3 is fixed. So, so yeah, if you guys like this content, then um, it would be great if you could subscribe to the channel. I'll have these uh, videos out every Friday, and uh, yeah, it'd be also great if you could give a thumbs up or, you know, feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. Uh, yeah, so thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!